And we are live. It's me again, <laughs> popping back onto this page. My name is Sarah Aspinall and I'm the founder of Breaking Ballet. And you may have seen that my backstage membership is currently open for enrollment, but it's not open for too much longer. It's going to close at 9 p.m. this evening so that I can start uh, focusing on all those new members inside backstage. So meanwhile, I have been interviewing some of my lovely backstage members so that you can hear from them what their experience has been like inside backstage. And this afternoon, I'm chatting with Rachel. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. You've been a member for a while now, haven't you, Rachel? And yeah, just coming up on uh, yeah a year. I'm just about to renew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do you mind just sharing with us what life was like before backstage and how you found us? Okay, so um, before backstage, I'd had um, I, in my previous uh, life, I'd done a lot of um, exercise, and it was part of my daily life. And then about seven years ago, I had um, an illness that stopped all of that in its tracks. And so I wasn't able to do anything at all for maybe about three years. And when I came out of that, I was having to, I was getting all sorts of problems as I was getting mobile again, because for at least a year of that, I wasn't really able to walk without sticks or help. And so I was finding that I had, was having lots of back problems and they were checking me out for all sorts of things and then they just discovered that I actually had no core, core left after my year on the sofa it's like who knew that that would happen <laughs> <laughs> and so I went the route of um through the hospital I was doing Pilates and that was helping but hel Pilates doesn't really float my boat as a thing to, it was some, not something that I'd ever done before and yes it's effective but it's mm. it, it's something that you do because you have to rather than because you love to do or for, speaking personally anyway I know people do love it um, and I came across um, Breaking Ballet just on one of your challenges it was the an abs challenge last mm -hmm. February um, and part of what I was needing to find was an exercise that I could do without triggering my illness because it's a chronic illness that can be made worse with exercise and I'd been trying various things and often getting worse again but with the abs challenge I managed it and was able to do it and actually see how it was strengthening me um, at the same time as not having triggering any nasty kind of flare-ups of my illness and I thought oh this is exciting and also I used to do ballet as a child well uh, up until I was 18 so I um, was very happy to have something that was ballet focused because that's kind of like going home to childhood with yeah it brings back years. fond memories doesn't yeah it? it's something that I love to do um in a way that Pilates wasn't and I so from that it was how I came into the breaking ballet fold really mm. um, and when you discovered partway through that challenge that there was a membership and that you could kind of graduate and continue that journey inside backstage what was your thought process there? Um, I've talked to all the members about this because there will be people out there who are sitting on the fence, not sure whether it's for them. Did you have any concerns or hesitation? That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was me entirely. That I was, um, I was kind of quite sceptical, I suppose. I hate to confess this to you now. You're, you've become a very good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You're being honest. I want people to be honest. Because, but, I, you know, I can quite see why that would happen. I can with an online I wasn't someone that would usually sign up for things, certainly not on the what essentially was a whimsy because I hadn't heard of you before the beginning of the abs challenge. And I then as it was nearing the end and I thought, well, it's, it's gone really well for me, the challenge. And it was um, I really enjoyed it and I could see that it was benefiting me. And I thought, well, I can sign up for a month and then I can always leave afterwards. And then I so I went in to sign up for a month and then I was faced with you can do a month or you can do a year it was the choices at the time I think and I don't know I, I threw caution to the wind and just sort of sod it I can I'm going to go for a year <laughs> so wow I sort of, what made you do that I think because um, it, um it's 
because you get a bit of a better deal if you sign up for the whole year rather than monthly and I had signed up for something else monthly and I'd ended up being a member for like two years yeah. of something completely unrelated this was dog training which has got nothing to do with this <laughs> but and 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 I wished then that I'd signed up for a year instead because then it would have saved me the money and so I, yeah. I just thought sod it I've really had it in this has been good this is worth doing so I took the plunge and I don't regret it for an instant because the month after I signed up so that was the beginning of lockdown time mm. so the I was made redundant and therefore I would have questioned whether I it would have you know I should have been continuing yeah. and whether it would have been worth you know doing carrying on with the payments but because I'd already paid for the year it was it was a done deal and mm. um for me that was uh, it was my success of the year really um mm. because it's meant that I've stayed consistent with my exercise for the whole year um and it's a, a lovely community to cheer you on and yeah you've been totally amazing you're one of the most inspirational women that I know <laughs> so, thank so. you Rach don't make me blush <laughs> <laughs> I can't say what I feel about breaking ballet without making you blush because no. you really, oh. <laughs> yeah, then you really, might make me cry because <laughs> you do kind of go above and beyond and try try your utmost to make sure that everyone's included and that everyone feels welcome and that um, for me, because of uh, my ongoing health conditions, there's things that I haven't been able to do and things that other people have had injuries, so they've struggled with certain things and you've managed to, you always come up with a solution or a way around it in a way that can make you feel included. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's really important to me because you hear, I hear people all the time tell me, I've been told by this person I can't do this anymore or I shouldn't do this or I should stop this thing that I love doing and and that's not a way to live your life and I just think that there's a way around most things we can find a solution for most things and moving your body is not just about um, improving aesthetics or or feeling good physically it's also important for your mental well-being yeah. To, to feel empowered and, and strong. And if you have a strong body, of course, you've got a strong mind. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your experience over the last 12 months and, and what that's done for you in terms of either physicality or, you know, your mental well-being. Um, I think the most striking thing, well, a striking thing is that prior to this in, you know, post having my health condition I've been I would it's it's kind of a bit up and down so I would have months when I'm feeling better and then I would get ill again and so for pretty much three months every year that I would drop out of doing any exercise whatsoever um because for a week or so you'd be too ill to do it and then you just you're feeling a bit meh and so it would take the three months to get back to starting to do it daily again and um and by which time you're kind of feels it felt like I was constantly starting again at ground yeah. zero really um but I am I don't think I've told you this so far uh, before but in this last year I've for every week you know so uh, I, I noticed just a few weeks ago that I thought oh I was because I write down the workouts on the calendar so I know what I've done when and I was thinking oh I've failed to meet my target this week and then I just thought hang on a minute Rachel you failed to meet your target which means you've worked out four times this week and I was looking back and every time I fail it's like I've, I've, I've essentially done four it's just usually four times and, that, and I thought well if that's what failure looks like I'm fine with that. <laughs> so, absolutely absolutely <laughs> that's amazing and I've not had any you know I have not had the three months or an even even a one month kind of fallow period where I haven't been doing things and um and I think it was what something that you said in one of the challenges in the group the first time you did a 30-day challenge in the membership group um and I was a bit anxious about that because I I must admit I do struggle a bit with the challenges because of um 
doing doing something so intense every day yeah and, but it's something that's really stayed with me and really helped me which was that you're doing something like the meditation or the self-care thing as a placeholder in the time that you would usually do it and that has really transformed my mindset with it um, fantastic and also yeah, of course we're trying to create that habit and we talk about showing up for yourself. So if you've got that placeholder every day, even on the days, as you say, where you, you know, you don't have the energy and you need to be very cautious with your health condition, you keep that space and you do something else valuable in it. Um, because at the end of the day, exercise is self-care. And so you can replace that with other forms of self-care because it, it you know, equally is valuable for sure. So that's been amazing. Also, I just I feel feeling stronger. Um, mm. And so one of the things um, which might seem counterintuitive because it's not that I don't love breaking ballet, but I also have always loved doing yoga, which I have done since I was a student. So for 20 plus, uh, maybe even 30 years. Don't, sh sh don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> don't know a long time. <laughs> um, I, I you know, up until I got ill, I was doing yoga every day, and when I wasn't able to do that, so my mental health really suffered. Mm. Um, and now, since I've been able to get strong enough by doing the fifteen-minute breaking ballet exercises, mm. that I have now been able to go back and do some of the more intense yoga workouts, which, if I'd tried them, would then give me back problems or things because I wasn't able to ho hold my yeah core strong enough and so it's strengthening bits of me um in a manageable way that then means that I can step up and do some mm -hmm. of the more intense yoga as well so it does make a huge difference and and I because of um knowing my limitations I I have not graduated I don't I'm not one of the people that does the whole uh, the whole three every week and this is another thing that I love about it that there's people in the group that essentially run something equivalent to three marathons a week um as well as doing a kind of an intense zumba class and then they'll pop on and do their breaking ballet and then there's me uh, who does uh, these days i have uh, upgraded so now i will do a, a warm-up and one of them um or or a longer yoga session each mm -hmm. day and um uh, but everyone is supportive of everyone else so you never feel judged for doing something you know not being able to do as much as someone else uh, you always feel supported everyone really cheers on your wins and lifts you up when you're down so it's the community is amazing with yeah. That. yeah yeah it really is and we've talked a lot about that haven't we or at least I talk at you about it <laughs> about the comparisonitis and how as women we are prone to doing that interestingly we're prone to comparing ourselves to other women but the one thing that we do that I think we don't realize we're doing is we compare ourselves now to our younger selves as well and often put an awful lot of pressure on ourselves to do and be who we were when we were in our 20s without accepting that we are no longer in our 20s and that we need to work with what we have now. Um, and I think that's why inside the group, there isn't that sense of competition or um, comparison, comparisonitis that goes on because everyone has accepted where they are and they're good with that. And yeah, you know, everyone wants to progress and, and to get yeah. better and stronger, but I think it's done in a healthy environment. Um, Very much so. It's really, it's a really, really supportive group. And um, a lot of the people in the group are now in, you know, my personal Facebook friends as well. Mm. Prior to lockdown, we, I, we was, I was starting to make arrangements with a few people that lived nearby to be able to go and visit, but that's not, not happened yet, but hopefully no, it, will it will one day, it will <laughs> one day. It'll be so lovely to have all these little pods of backstage members meeting up as well. That'd be really nice. And Rachel, just to finish up, what would you say to people or someone who is watching this and is still sitting on the fence and hasn't signed up to backstage? They want to, but they're just still, you know, not quite sure. What would you say to help them make the decision? I can only speak from my own personal experience because being a waiver of myself um, was that, as I said earlier on, I, I haven't regretted it for 
one second and I'm just about to renew for another year because it's it just keeps me on the straight and narrow um it's not just the exercises there is all of the other the, um the help with um sorting out diet and meal prep prep stuff and mindset and the book club and there's all sorts of other stuff inside um the membership um it's, it's a lovely community um I would say go for it because I did and it's just been brilliant it's far exceeded any of my expectations from it um and mm. so I would hate for anyone to miss out on all of the loveliness that is inside <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you Rachel I do hope that these videos have been helping people make those decisions I know that people you know if you've come across something online you're going to be skeptical about it of course you are um, and I hope that these conversations have helped people see what it's like inside backstage and I hope that they take the plunge and join us to see for themselves um, so if you are sitting on the fence, you're still not sure and you've got any questions, please do get your question answered before 9 p.m. this evening because that's when the doors will close. The link to read more about Backstage and to sign up is above this video. If you've got questions for me or Rachel, drop them below. Um, but thank you, Rachel, for joining me. It was a pleasure chatting with you as always. And I'll speak to you very soon. Yes. Have a great evening. Thank Take you care. Bye-bye. Bye, Rachel.